In this video, I'm gonna be teaching you everything there is to know about SEO silos and website architecture. Now first, what is an SEO silo? This concept refers to a standardized structure of your website where certain pages will link to each other based on a thoughtful standardized pattern, typically based on relevance. Now if that sounds confusing, don't worry, I'm going to be breaking this down very, very soon. But first, let's talk about the benefits of a planned site architecture. The first benefit is topical relevance. When you have a page about protein powder and you have other pages on your website about protein powder linking to it, Guess what? Google thinks you're a little bit more about protein powder, and when you make Google's life easier, they rank you higher. Second, you get a lot more mileage out of your link building. Your homepage, for example, typically gets more backlinks externally than any other page on your website. A lot of people call this backlink value link juice. With a well-planned SEO silo structure, you can make sure all of that link juice is spread around to all the pages of your website, thus increasing their rankings as well. Third, you can rank much easier for long tail keywords. Because you successfully delivered that link juice to all the pages on your site, don't be surprised if some of those pages start ranking without any external link building at all. People will link to informational articles like how to clean a fishing pole much more easily and leniently than they would a commercial article like buy fishing poles. You can focus your external link building efforts on getting these easy to land links on the informational pages while still powering up your commercial pages through internal linking. Now before we jump over and start talking about the various architectures and configurations of SEO silos, now is probably a good time for me to ask you to hit that like button, smash it, mash it, whatever you gotta do. That lets me know that you like the content you saw and you wanna see more of it. So help a brother out. The key to good SEO siloing starts with foundational keyword research. You wanna be able to take your main foundational keyword topics break them down into subtopics, break those down into subtopics, and then structure each page of your site based on this categorization. Let's explain this with an example. So if we take this example of a website called dietmasters.com, let's say its main keyword it would ever wanna rank is best diets. Let's see how we can break this down with an example. Now, if we take a little bit of time and do a little bit of research on Google itself, or perhaps using our favorite keyword research tool, we can find that best diets could be broken down into various diet types. So we can have the keto diet, for example, ketogenic diet. We could have the paleo diet, and then the vegan diet. And then each of these topics can be broken down themselves. Let's see how that looks. So for example, we can take the keto diet, just doing a little bit of research, we can find that subtopics underneath the keto diet could be keto diet meal plan, keto diet supplements, keto diet apps. We can do the same thing for the paleo diet. So with paleo diet, we have paleo diet weight loss, paleo diet meal plan, and then the paleo caveman diet. And then typically for vegan, we can talk about vegan protein sources, vegan meal plan, and then raw vegan. Guess what we're gonna do after this? We're gonna break it down even further. Now I'm not illustrating the whole tree here, that would make this slide way too messy, but we can see that the keto diet meal plan is broken down into breakfast, into keto diet meal plan for men, and keto diet meal plan for women. And as you notice here, typically as you go higher in this chain, these are more commercial and more difficult keywords to rank for. And typically as you go lower in the chain, these are your more informational and typically easier long tail keywords to rank for. Now let's get into the meat of this video and talk about the real heart of SEO siloing, which is how you interlink these pages together. This is what truly defines the architectures, the various configurations of siloing. So let's get into it. Internal linking. And when I'm talking about internal linking, I'm talking completely about contextual links here. Contextual links are also called body links. These are links that you have in the middle of your article, in your paragraphs, in your sentences. I'm not referring to sidebar linking, I'm not referring to navbar linking, footer linking. The links that really matter when it comes to siloing are your contextual links. Now here's configuration number one. I call this the top-down recycle SEO silo. In this kind of configuration, again, we have the same architecture as before. We have all the keywords mapped out, but here's how we're going to do the interlinking. We have our top page, best diets. That's going to link down to the keto diet page, the paleo diet, and the vegan diet page. Remember, these are contextual links found in the body of the article. And then and so forth, just using the example for the keto diet, that would break down linking to the meal plan page, the supplement page, and then the app page. And then guess what? The meal plan page will link down to breakfast, men, and women. And then what happens is it links back up here from the bottom of the silo all the way up to the top page. Now let's take a look here and see what would happen if we got an external link to any one of these pages, starting with the best diets page. So let's move up here. 
So let's say we get an external link, meaning a link from another website to this best diets page. Now that link juice is gonna flow down to all three of these top guys. It's gonna flow down to this meal plan supplement and app, down here to the breakfast page for men, women. It's easy to see, you just follow the lines here and then it's gonna recycle back up to the top here. So as you can see here, there's pretty good flow of link juice. Anytime you get a link anywhere on the site, it's gonna flow around to the various pages and every single page on the entire website is gonna get a little piece of that link juice. That's great. What is the reason that we do this flow back up to the top here? Because what this is doing is called completing the loop here. If we, for example, had a link that was going to here, that was going to here, then it kind of dead ended here. Well, guess what? There'd be no benefit after this point. Like if we got a link directly externally to this breakfast page and that didn't link out to anything else, well, that's a dead end for that link juice and it goes nowhere. How does it look in terms of topical relevance? So the more links that you have from similar content, the more topical relevance you would get from other pages on your website, then Google thinks you're more relevant to that topic. So for example, we look at the keto diet page, it only has one link from the best diets page. If we look at the meal plan page, it only has one link from this keto diet page. So the topical relevance in this configuration isn't great at all. Another reason I'm not a big fan of this configuration is typically if you're looking to getting someone closer to the sale, you wanna link the other direction completely, right? So if someone comes into a long tail keyword like, what's a meal plan for the keto diet for men, right? So he lands on this page, we want to be able to link him up to stuff that's more general and more commercial and intense. So we want to be able to link here and then give him to the keto diet page or maybe the app page or something like that where you can spend money like this supplement page, for example. This one links in reverse and it gets people further away from commercial keywords. So it makes me not so much a fan of this one. Let's take a look at the next one. Configuration number two is called the reverse silo. This is one of the most popular silos. And let me just describe the linking in this configuration. First, we have the best diets page, and this does a two-way link to the keto diet page, the paleo diet page, and the vegan diet page. So not only does the best diets page link to the keto diet, but the keto diet links back to it. And then the pattern follows as such. So keto diet goes down to meal plan supplements app, meal plan breakfast for men, for women. So what happens here when we get an external link? Let's say just for fun, we got an external link to the supplements page. So the link juice is gonna flow up to the keto diet page, which is gonna to flow to the best diets, meal plan, supplement, and app. So we have a full direction of where this link juice could go. It can go in the up direction, it can go the down direction. It also handles this consideration where we want to be able to link in the top direction more often because that's typically more commercial and where we can make more money. It also really has a lot better topical relevance. As you see, the keto diet page is getting a lot more links than before, whereas it only had a link from the best diets page before, it's now getting a link from the meal plan page, supplements page, and app page. So overall, I really like this configuration. Another reason I'm a fan of this configuration is because you can see here that certain pages are only linking to each other if they're very tight in relevance. Obviously, meal plans have a lot to do with breakfast meal plans, meal plans for men and women, and the keto diet. So they're very close and very adjacent to what they link to. And that's good for beginner websites when you really, really wanna be tight on what you link to in order to establish topical relevance. For a beginner website, you don't wanna have keto diet meal plan linking to a paleo diet page that's going to throw off Google and confuse them. So with this reverse silo, you're, you're linking very closely. It kind of protects you from risk. Configuration number three is called the serial silo. And I'm not talking about Captain Crunch here. I'm talking about serial as in the opposite of parallel. And here's how it works here. So we have best diets. It's going to link down to the first subtopic beneath it. So it's going to link to the keto diet page. Keto diet will link over to paleo diet we'll link to vegan diet, and then back up to the best diet page. And then we do that again down here, and again down here. What happens we get a link here? Okay, so let's just pick one at random. We got a link to this breakfast page. So link juice will flow to for men, for women. It'll go up to meal plan. Meal plan will make it to supplements app, it gets a keto diet. So overall, the link juice is gonna flow over the entire website. That's great, but Man, I just have to tell you, I hate this configuration. I really don't see much use for it at all. So just take a look here. So the best diets page is linking to the keto diet page. The app page is link linking to the keto diet page. That's great. It's got two topical relevance links. That's not very much when it could be getting a lot more and a lot more relevance. Plus any page in the middle here, so keto diet or paleo diet page, the paleo diet page is only getting one topical relevance link 
And it's not even really that relevant. Keto diet linking over to paleo diet. I mean, they're literally different types of diets. Why would you want to link these together? The only reason that I see people doing this, and still I think it's a mistake despite that, is let's imagine your keto diet page had 70 different subtopics. So do you really want 70 different external links leaving this page and going to the various pages underneath it? You might have to pick and choose, right? I still don't think doing a serial approach and only linking to one of them and then having them link to each other is the way to go about it. So please avoid this one. I'm not into it. Let's look at configuration number four. This one, I think I hate even worse. This one's called the YOLO silo. This isn't an official name, I just made it up, where you just have every single page links to every single page on your website. And obviously, I don't even need to map this out. If I get a link anywhere, that link just is gonna flow around the entire darn thing. The problem with this one is you get a lot of non-topical relevance. So I'm gonna have vegan diet stuff linking to keto diet meal plans for women. It just doesn't make any sense at all. On top of that, is when every page links to every other page on your website, meaning that there's absolutely uniform and equilibrium spread of link juice, that means that no single page has a particular advantage to rank over any other of them. And that's silly because certain pages have more commercial intent for yourselves, can make you more money. Certain pages have more search volume. You want to have other pages get advantages over each other. Configuration number five is what I call the priority silo. And this is for advanced SEOs that really want to take control and get the best out of their interlinking out of the siloing. So I've identified two pages here that I've marked in gold. One is keto diet, and that typically has a lot of search volume. It's the top of the category. It's gonna have a lot of search volume here. Obviously, it's gonna bring a lot of traffic. And then another page here would be like keto diet supplements. And this one probably has a lot of affiliate links that I could put on there. I could link out to my favorite keto supplements and get some money made for this website. So how this linking configuration works for the priority silo, you start with the reverse silo. So that's the basic foundation here. But then because I've identified these priority pages, I'm gonna find other relevant pages on my website and interlink manually to these without any structure. I'm just gonna go you know, up the chain, sideways on the chain, whatever. I'm gonna do the same for the supplements page. Now, because we've already looked at the reverse silo and the basis of this configuration is already the reverse silo, you already know that link juice is gonna flow around really nicely in this configuration. But where this one particularly excels is topical relevance. See, we've found our priority pages and they have more internal links than other pages because they're more important for us to rank them and they have exceedingly amounts of topical relevance because it's not just two links linking to them, it's not just one link, there's multiple, sometimes five, six. In a real configuration with tons of pages on the website, you could get up to 20 and 30. Now, if you look at some of the more successful websites on the internet, if you look at the wire cutter, you look at Gear Hungry, they internally link just like this. They link in excess, so to speak, and not to the point where it's too much, but they prioritize and they identify those pages and they link more to them. So the question you probably have right now is, which one is the best? Well, let's take a look. For beginners, I'm gonna recommend the good old reverse silo. The reasons for this are, first off, it's super easy to follow. You just simply identify your structure, you map everything out, you map out your subtopics, your sub subtopics, your long tails, and then you just link down and you link up and you're done. Also, as we've discussed, it's great link juice flow. No page is left out, no page is left orphaned. Everything is gonna get good link juice. And there's decent topical relevance here. Like most pages are getting quite a few links, especially the important ones. For advanced SEOs, I'm gonna recommend the good old priority silo. Now this is excellent for topical relevance. It's excellent for link juice flow. The only downside here is there's more management involved. Now let's jump over into some FAQ, some Q&A, right? So question number one, what is the difference between a hard silo and a soft silo? Have you ever heard these words? First off, soft silos is everything we've been talking about so far. These are built through interlinking. So it's simply one page internally linking to another page is establishing what's called a soft silo. And the configuration and the total architecture of this is defining the overall soft silo itself. Hard silos are built through directory structures. So an example of this might be dietmasters.com forward slash paleo forward slash meal plan. Now interlinking is also necessary when you're do, doing hard siloing. Just because you make the directory structure doesn't mean you're gonna have link juice flow. It doesn't mean you're establishing topical relevance. It's just an icing on the cake type thing. 
This is helpful, especially for users. If a user wants to know where am I on this website, am I talking, am I in the paleo section, am I in the keto section, like what's going on? It's helpful for users, but it's not required here. It's also kind of helpful in local SEO when you're breaking things down to state, to county, to city level, all that kind of stuff. But again, not required. Focus on soft silos. Now the next question is about anchor text. What kind of anchor text should be used when I'm sending links to these internal pages? Let's say for this keto diet page, what kind of anchor text should I send? I'm sending five links to this page. How should I diversify the anchor text, if at all? Now I do a lot of SEO testing and we've tested various configurations. Let's try 100% of the links being target anchor text. Let's try 80%, 60%. And here's the results I found. The best result we found was when we had 100% varied target anchor text going to any one of these pages. And what I mean by varied is instead of keto diet, keto diet, keto diet, I might do information about the keto diet, keto dieting, keto diet, etc. Just always varied up. So that got the best result. That said, one of my recommendations is maybe you go 80% varied target anchor text and 20% miscellaneous, like click here, read more. That adds in a little bit of a buffer for error. Typically what I've seen is it's hard to over optimize for internal anchors, but if you do spam keto diet over and over again, you could get into a situation where you're over optimized even internally. And I have penalized myself like this. So I kind of recommend, especially if you're outsourcing to add in some kind of buffer for error. Frequently asked question number three is how relevant do pages need to be to link to them? Another very good question. For new sites, I recommend very, being very, very tight on your relevance. So paleo stuff should only link to paleo stuff, etc. I've had sites that are just starting out and I'm trying to cross link between categories and just nothing worked out. Once I tighten things up, then Google started to really understand the topical relevance and started to reward my site more. For established authority sites, you can relax, you can relax a lot. Check out the wire cutter. Just Google any one of their pages, like for example, best coffee grinder or best coffee maker or something like that. It's not all coffee pages that are linking to these pages. Once you're nice and established and you're an authority, you can really be flexible on how much you're linking to these pages and how relevant they are. And you can just focus on shuffling around that link juice and making sure that's distributed through your site. Next frequently asked question is, what is the most important page to link from? That is your homepage. Consider that your homepage is the best page on the internet to get a link from. It's always super relevant to your website and it's got a lot of link juice because a lot of external links are going into it. So when you're linking out from it, make sure you're being stingy about it. Only link to your most important pages because you can't link to every single page on your website from the homepage. Link to your most important ones. And our last frequently asked question, are there any pitfalls to think about? I got two for you. The first is sending exact match anchors over and over to the same page is something that could over optimize you. I have a war story. There was an affiliate website that I had and just before the Christmas holidays when sales just go through the roof, I wrote a bunch of content. I wanted to rank my main pillar page. I interlinked them all with exact match anchor and just tanked my rankings, absolutely tanked them. Figured out what the problem was and then varied up the anchor text and finally I bounced back, but it was too late. It was after the Christmas holiday. So this issue is burned into my psyche. Please don't make the same mistake that I had. The second one is not closing the loop. And you might remember this from before. Remember when we're linking down from the top level pages to the subtopics and these guys, never have a page like this that doesn't link back up to something else. And whenever you have a dead end like this, that link juice just, just goes stale. It doesn't go anywhere else. No topical relevance is passed on. No link juice is passed on. That's not a good thing, so don't do that. And here's just some quick parting words with you. Now, despite all these configurations and architectures, you have three main goals with your interlinking. Link to pages that are relevant, link to pages you wanna rank, and link even more to pages that you really wanna rank. At the very least, just stick to these three concepts and you'll be good to go. Now, if you like what you saw, remember to subscribe and mash the like button. Happy ranking.